What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of My Other Passion. I'm Ernest Baker, Editor-in-Chief of Front Office Sports, and today we have a very special guest, quarterback at Ohio State University, the leading candidate for this year's Heisman Trophy. Of course, I'm talking about C.J. Stroud. This kid has a lot to say. We talked about his football career and how football has changed his life. We talked about name, image, and likeness and how that's completely shifted the college sports landscape. And then we talked a little bit about where he sees himself in the near future, the NFL, and honestly, so much more. I'm not going to hold you all. I'm not going to keep you waiting. Let's go ahead and get into it. Clearly, you know, we got the opportunity to talk to a current college superstar, likely a future NFL superstar. And we got to hear from our sponsors real quick, and then we'll be right back. 2000, 2008, 2022, when it comes to the economy, those are some scary years. First, you have the dot com crash and the housing crash, and then whatever roller coaster we're going through right now. One thing's for certain it is a dangerous time not to know your numbers. But over 31,000 businesses have the confidence and clarity they need because they rely on NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite gives you the visibility and control over your finances inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, everything that you need to manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and ultimately improve your margins. The best thing about it, it's all in one place. So when you're trying to prepare for uncertain times, just remember NetSuite. You can identify rising costs, automate your business processes, easily see where to save money. That's why 93% of customers say they improve their visibility and control when they upgrade it to NetSuite. So what are you waiting for? Right now, you're in luck because NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. All you got to do is head to netsuite.com slash myotherpassion, netsuite.com slash myotherpassion. Remember it. Go there right now. I promise you're going to see better results from your business. All right, CJ, welcome to the podcast. What's going on with you, brother? Uh, Not much, man. Just living life blessed. Uh, just enjoying the season and uh, trying to make the full, uh, make the best of my time in college. Well, I was just about to ask that. You're at an iconic football school. What is the football culture like at Ohio State? Um, the football culture at Ohio State is a lot of different things. I mean, of course, it's football, but I think it's deeper than that. Um, I definitely think it's a brotherhood at Ohio State. Uh, me and my teammates are very close. And, I mean, uh, Coach Day's term for that is basically fight. And that's the culture that we live by. That's our motto is just um, fight, fight, fight to be the best version of yourself every day. So um, that, that's, in a nutshell, what our culture is. Yeah, well, you know, we can see it. You've had some incredible performances and, you know, doing a lot to continue to accelerate that program. Given all of their history, what's it like holding some of these records, you know, the 573 yards, six touchdown passes? Like, uh, understand it from your perspective. Does that just happen? And it's like, yo, it's cool, but on to the next game. Or do you think about that? Or you ever think back and say, damn, in January, I went crazy. Like, just how is it when you have those type of accomplishments on your resume? Right. Um, I mean, for me, I just think about it as uh, just a blessing, honestly, like just to be able to I think first and foremost, just be at a place like Ohio State. Uh, never in my life I thought I would be all the way in Ohio, being from California. Um, but then I just think about my teammates, like my uh, my linemen, the, the linemen I played with last year and then this year, how great they've been. And they're really the reason for my success, along with the receivers, the running backs and the tight ends, and then with our defenses as well. So. Um, I, I do look back and be like, damn, that was that was amazing. But I don't look at myself. I just look at the good and fond memories that we had as a team, and spending time together during those moments. So um, it's it's more than just me looking at myself and my stats. Uh, more so, just uh, having great memories and, and, and great camaraderie with my brothers. Yeah, I hear that, um, and you know, I, I think it's great that you are keeping in perspective all the different things that go into, you know, an individual success. You got to have a great line, great coaching, great culture. So uh, respect. But, you know, we do have a lot of love for you as a quarterback. Uh, You know, I believe you're a favorite for the Heisman uh, this year. And just, you know, that's that's a lot of pressure. Like, do you do you think about that, though? Do you say, yo, I'm doing this, I'm doing that because, you know, I want to take that trophy home? Um, no, I, honestly, um, I'm a firm believer in that everything happens for a reason. And, uh, I think God kind of directs your path on the way he wants, wants it to. So it's not in my control. I mean, I can control how hard I work every day. I can control how my attitude is and my effort. 
um, but I can't control what somebody thinks about me or, or uh, whatever awards are up there. I mean, at the end of the day, you got to win uh, games. Uh, so, I mean, that's my main goal. So, I'm not really focused on all that. Uh, it's cool to hear. And, uh, honestly, I don't like to hear it just because um, I just like to stay grounded and stay humble. So, um, I definitely think that it is cool, though, because it is a goal of mine and definitely something I've dreamed about since I've been a kid. So, um, just to be in the conversation is amazing. But um, I think my mindset is on bigger and better things, like being a team up north, uh, winning the Big Ten Championship, and then, of course, winning the National Championship, hopefully. So, um, God willing, I'll get to do all three of those things this season. Yeah, well, we'll uh, we'll definitely be watching to see how that turns out. Of course, a lot of people are watching and thinking about, you know, how things might go when it comes to the NFL. What are your aspirations in that regard? I know you're focused on Ohio State, but, you know, your dreams on another level seem to be within reach. You know, how much thought are you giving that? Uh, I'm a firm believer in just uh, controlling what you can control and, and living in the moment because I feel like when you look look forward and you look too much to the future, then you're not letting God do his job. You're trying to control what what uh, what enabler you can't control. So, I mean, I'm not really thinking about it. Uh, I think the better I play, the better it will uh, come. So that's why I'm just focused on now, just playing good. Uh, trying to play great with my teammates now trying to win games now. So hopefully uh, all that stuff will take care of itself when it comes. But what do you think of uh, the name, image, and likeness change in college sports? I mean, you very briefly got to see the end of the previous era. You've entered a great part of your career right as, you know, this shift took place. And, and what's it been like? You know, you're one of the very best out there right as this is happening. So uh, what's your take on all of it? Um, I mean, like I said before, I think everything happens for a reason. So uh, it's been a blessing for me. Um, I thank God for it every day. Just being able to not only just, of course, have some pocket change, but also be able to give back to my community, uh, to my community back home and then here in Columbus and then help my family. Um, that's something that has been real great for me and my family, able to help my mom, my sister, um, and certain people around my hometown, uh, in whatever case that may be, if that's giving back um, with a toy driver, if that's um, giving back to my high school with, with equipment, whatever I can do to try to help uh, with the blessings that I have. So um, I definitely think the NIL is something that is uh, long overdue, but it's here now, so I'm definitely grateful, and I definitely think that it will keep on um, doing positive things for not only uh, the players but our communities as well. Well, one of – the deals that uh, has come out of that is this partnership that you have with Athletic Bruin. I see the hoodie. Uh, why did you align with them? I just thought it really made sense on the movement that I, and the mindset that I have. Um, they're definitely one of the, my favorite companies that I've been working with. Um, someone that I um, have a lot of, uh, I think, not just a partnership, but a friendship, um, meeting the CEO, meeting the owners, and and even the, the media people that they brought out to us has uh, been really amazing just to be able to uh, enjoy time with them. But, I mean, their message is kind of like something that I hold near and dear to my heart is, um, I mean, just they understand what it is to be an athlete and want to have fun and want to be a college student or, or even as a pro or even in high school. Um, the consequences that come with that if you don't take care of your business off the field uh, and one of those things that is really common in my age group is, is alcohol. So um, this is definitely an alternative that you're able to still look cool, still have fun, still um, be socially active, uh, but at the same time be careful and, and be a, a student athlete first and hold that responsibility. Yeah. What do you think of the product itself? Like, I love that your values align. You know, it seems like you rock with the actual people in the building over there. Um, but I think a lot of times people say, oh, you know, they just, they took the check, you know, et cetera. What do you actually think? You know, do you use, you drink athletic brewing? Like, what can you tell us about the product itself? Yeah, I mean, um, whenever I work with somebody, I definitely think it's just deeper than just money. Money isn't everything. Um, it definitely is is probably five five percent of the partnership. Um, I think it's the the relationship that is everything. Because whenever somebody brings your name up, you want them want it to be positive. Because that's really all you hold in life is, uh, is what your name brings to the table. So 
Um, I definitely think that I'm. Uh, I, I hope that I am. I bring that ta- that to the table with athletic brewing. And um, I'm sorry, what was your second question? <laughs> Just like how you like it. Like, do you drink yeah, it? Uh, like... Yeah, man. It, it's it's definitely tasteful. I mean, um, I never was. I never really drank alcohol growing up. Uh, I never really tasted it for real, but. Um, they said it was something close to it, giving it to like my mom and stuff. And, um, but me and every time I, I drink it, I mean, it's, it's a good time. I mean, it, it's definitely favorable. Um, you have the authentic beer taste. So, um, it definitely is, uh, uh, not just a, a straight beer, but it has some, some sweetness to it, some flavor, some punch. Um, and it has a good foam to it as well, which I definitely think is great. So. Yeah, they're they're blowing up like the past couple years. Uh, I've definitely seen, you know, a lot of growth there and just like the non-alcoholic market in general. I think that's really dope, too, that, you know, you just focus like that. You're not going to let something distract you from the mission that you're on right now. So yes, uh, so props to you on that. In general, you. you're you're just like a super active you know, NIL athlete. You got athletic brewing, lemon perfect, DSW, Express. C4, go puff. You got a lot going on. Like, what have all these deals taught you about business and marketing? Um, I definitely think it's taught me, uh, one, just relationships and um, partnerships, but at the same time, just being a businessman. And not just being a, a businessman, but being a business, uh, me personally. So I definitely hold that uh, to me closely just because I, I look up to people like Shaq, people like LeBron, that I definitely want to be like that when I grow up. And, uh, become their ages and stuff and just having a, a business and multiple biz- business out there. So I'm learning the game slowly. And then, of course, I'm around great great people that help me, like uh, my marketing agent, Brian Bernie, and then my agent, uh, David Mulligetta, who actually does my marketing as well. So um, just learning the game from them. And they always help me with, uh, even if it's during the season and I can't uh, negotiate or do whatever that it needs to be done, they're always in the forefront of it and they just – Ask me if I want to do it or not, and I give them a thumbs up. Or and then they give me their feedback and what uh, I should do or shouldn't, and then they leave it up to me. And so um, in those processes, I'm still a man and I still get to do what I want. But um, it's always great to have uh, great people in your corner to uh, kind of guide you on what you should be doing and what you shouldn't. Yeah, it's super important to have a good team around you. I think sometimes that's like the difference. Like the talent is there, but you got to have the right type of support, people understand what you're trying to accomplish in your life. Um, And clearly you have a great team. You put them in a good position by being such a talented athlete, but then it seems like they're doing their part, you know, to bring these opportunities to you. So keep it real with me. Are you making a ton of money though? Like, like I've seen (laughs) now, now we're in the NIL era where like, people are talking about serious income and, and you appear to be a beneficiary of that. So like, are you really getting an opportunity to stack up crazy at 21 years old? Um, I mean, not real. I mean, like I'm blessed. Don't get me wrong, but, uh, it's something that I'm definitely not comfortable for the rest of my life with. Um, I'm blessed to be able to, of course, like I said, get back to the community and help those around me. Um, but I'm not like Buku rich or that. I ain't got a crazy amount of money, but I am blessed. Especially right. to be a college student, so I don't know if they answer your question or not. But no, I mean, it it definitely does. No, it it definitely does. Um, I think a lot of people are just curious about that. Like we spent growing up, man. I couldn't have, you know, I'm I'm probably about ten years older than you. I couldn't I couldn't have imagined this day would come. Uh, but I think it's great because I thought the other way that they were operating wasn't it. So I, I really right. I love seeing young men like you be able to you know, take advantage because uh, because Lord knows the schools <laughs> and the NCAA does. Um, right. But, yo, one thing with those deals people were talking about a lot was like the car dealership one. Like, why why'd you pick the G-Wagon over to Bentley? Um, I mean, that, honestly, that, that kind of just came out to, uh, too fast, I guess, because that wasn't even the case. Um, I definitely um, didn't – I didn't really – pick North Bentley or the G-Wagon, it was kind of like an option for me, whatever one I wanted. And uh, I've always kind of dreamed of having a, a G-Wagon, so it was kind of cool to get, but um, I think it's still a car. Like It's uh, it's cool to have, but at the end of the day, um, material things are material. Um, I, I, I actually enjoy other things, like spending time with family, spending time with friends. Uh, I have to hold those way more close to me than just a materialistic car. 
So I am blessed to have it, and I, and I appreciate my partners with Sarshawn, somebody who I really have grown to uh, have a kind of a family um, relationship with as well. So um, I'm blessed to be able to around great people. That probably taught you how a little bit about media and people just taking stuff and running with it. Like, you know, you got to be, you got to, I mean, it's, it comes with the territory, but I'm sure yeah. you're, I'm sure you're seeing now, like, wow, people will scrutinize everything I do or they'll take right. something and make a story out of it. So, you know, it's, it's interesting to hear that from your perspective. Most definitely. One thing I think is, is interesting. Um, you know, you're, you're not super active on social media. You definitely like post about your deals, but you're not, on there all the time sharing all your thoughts and stuff and like your generation is kind of known for for their affinity for social for oversharing every w they get talking about it and like why do you take a different approach to social media um i mean uh, during the season i'm i just think that i'm really locked in and i don't have time to pe see what people are saying or seeing what they're not saying whatever the case may be and i definitely think it's a distraction uh definitely during the season so um, I let my people around me handle it and, and do what they need to do. So I'm really, really never on it. Um, but during the off season, I mean, I, I do enjoy it. Um, I like interacting with people. I like inter interacting with my supporters and stuff like that. So um, it's something that I, I don't uh, think is a total negative thing, but it can be if you're too, if you're on it too much or uh, that's your main focus is to impress people on there. And um, I think social media is fake, to be honest with you. I think um, people only post their Ws, they only post their wins. And uh, even me, I go through things personally, and I take losses. And um, I mean, I'm, I, I wouldn't share those things, but uh, at the same time, uh, I always say comparison is a thief of joy. So uh, a lot of kids out there are probably looking up to people who they don't really know and uh, could be living a fraud life. So I don't, I, I never wanted to be that type of person. So I just try to um, even lean light, even to God, in certain ways um, on social media, and you know? And just give people a little input and not be overbearing with it, but try to help. So, no, oh, that's super real. What is it like when you say you know I'm interacting with with supporters and stuff? What is it like having fans? Like you know you you got millions of people who watch you play. First of all, um, and then and then you got fans. You got you have people who like legitimately love you and never met you a day in your life. And, and just what's it like dealing with that? I'm sure if you walk around, you know. Columbus, you, you're going to get stopped and ask for pictures and just like your life just changed all of a sudden. What has it been like dealing with that part of um, your career? Uh, it's been uh, it's been pretty cool, man. Something that I definitely asked for, something I'm blessed with to be able to people notice me and stuff like that. But um, it is sometimes overwhelming and uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not too much of a people's person. Like I like interacting with people, but at the same time, I got to still have a sense of privacy and I definitely think sometimes it breaches my privacy a little bit, but I think the day, I mean, it comes with the territory. So I'm super blessed um, to be able to be in the shoes of um, even inspire kids and stuff like that. So uh, I think that's why God put me on this earth. So um, it is amazing, but at the same time, it does get a little overwhelming. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. I, I definitely wasn't in your position when, when I was your age. Um, but you man, you're, I gotta say like your attitude, you, you, you seem just like really focused. You seem like, like super humble. Like, like, how do you, how do you do that? Like, how do you be in your position as young as you are and not let it go to your head a little bit or, or has it, you know, and you have to check yourself and be like, bro, you, you have not reached the mountaintop yet. Like, how do you stay focused when everybody's ready to give you the world, you know, right now and you still got to, you know, what you would think is a long way to go. Um, I mean, I, honestly, I just think that stuff isn't, isn't real. I mean, uh, no one goes through things in life and it just becomes easy all of a sudden. So, um, just me and my, my life and uh, my childhood, just understanding that, um, being humble is the best way to go just because, I mean, God, God will give it to you, but you'll also take it away if you're not humble with it. So it's something that I definitely try to preach to, not only my teammates, but kids and, and people around me and people who watch me is that um, being humble is definitely something that um, we have to work on because when the world gasses you up, you get to understand that it's not real. Um, they don't understand. They don't. A lot of people don't see behind closed doors. So um, not saying that I'm a bad person behind closed doors, I don't think. But at the same time, um, I just try to shine light on 
uh, being humble just because it's the right thing to do. And you don't ever want to uh, be around somebody and just make them feel like you're more than them or make them feel less than. So, um, and, I've, and I've been that person that has felt less than around certain people, and I never want to be that to anybody. So um, I definitely think being humble is the right way to go. Yeah, I agree. And it's really it's really cool to see someone in your position like preaching those values. Um, when it comes to the college sports space and, and, and really college football at large, um, you know, I don't know if you will be in school to really see this through. But but what do you think about conference realignment like USC and UCLA and the Big Ten? Like like what what do you think of that change? Is it just like part of the business? whatever i don't care i got my game next week or, or are you like damn that's crazy like like what do you think yeah i think it's cool i definitely think change is, is good um i definitely think that uh just combining kind of like the the west coast with the midwest and the east coast is a good thing um you you get i don't say you get tired of play, playing the same teams but it's cool just to play different teams so uh, i wish you know, i would be able to uh, I mean, I, you never know. I'm pretty sure it comes into effect 2025, and that'll be my uh, think. I would be a fifth year senior or something like that. So I don't know if I'll partake in those times, but um, I would have loved to. Um, and uh, definitely, I think think it's a good thing to um, play against new competition. So I'm excited for uh, everybody kind of mixing up a little bit. For real, um, I think it's going to be super interesting. But before that takes effect. You know, OSU already has, uh, you know, some great rivalries, some some highly anticipated matchups. I know uh, Michigan is a story rival, right? Like, like, I don't know if you're thinking about November 26 yet or if they even stand out on the schedule that much. But I know, in fact, I work uh, I work with someone who went to Ohio State, like a huge fan. <laughs> and so the fans perspective is a little different. Um but can you can you tell them uh, anything about that game or just I don't know how you view the Michigan rivalry? It's kind of like one of the most discussed things among that that Big Ten community. Oh uh, yeah, I mean uh, I think it's probably the most watched rivalry I think in sports or one of them. I know it's top five, uh, so it's cool to play in. I mean uh, I'm excited for the game and uh, but I mean I. Uh, a couple more games before that, so I got to focus on those and, and just focus on our team. So uh, when that comes, I'll be focused for it. But as of right now, I'm just focused on my team and my season. Right. What about when we talk about, like, changes in the space? What about uh, college football playoff expansion? Like, you – I think they're going from four teams to 12 teams, and I actually saw a story recently that they're trying to move it up two years and make it 2024 instead of 2026. But – you know, you were just talking about what you're trying to accomplish this year. What do you What do you think of that? Like, do you think it's the right move? Do you You know, do you want to see more yeah. teams and have more um, of a format? Yeah, I definitely think it's the right move. Because uh, when you look at any other playoff, uh, I mean, really in any other sport, I mean, they have longer playoffs. So I definitely think it'll kind of shorten up the regular season, which I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it definitely makes it more entertaining, which I definitely think is a plus. In the positive, so um, I'm, I think I think it's a good thing. I, I definitely think that it was long overdue, um, and it'll it'll definitely make the game more exciting, more entertaining. Do you have any like passions or hobbies outside of football? Like I know somebody like you, I imagine, just has to like live and breathe the game. If you if you're really trying to take it to the level, it sounds like you want to take it to, but. I don't know. Do you do you have you know? Are you really into music? You got any artists that you particularly love? Or are you a gamer or or what? Like you know, what do you do when you're not thinking about football? Or are you like a hundred percent football every day, all day? No, uh, I think if somebody's telling you that they're lying, uh, <laughs> or they're just not a, uh, or they, uh, I don't know, they just might be a football head. But no, nah, that's not me. Uh, I mean, I I, I I do like football. I love football. Um, but it's not everything that I think about all day. Um, I like family time. Um, I like movies and TV shows. I like playing basketball. Um, I mean, it's a couple other things that I like to do. I like golf. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I don't want to just watch football all day. I kind of like to get away from it, honestly. Basketball and golf. I like to see you out there 
see what your skills are like on a course or the basketball court. You feel like you're pretty good at both of those? Uh, golf, I'm new to, but basketball, I mean, that was my first love. So uh, I definitely think that I'm good at basketball, but golf, I don't really know. Yeah, you got to uh, holler at J.R. Smith or Steph Curry, give right. me some pointers. I think it's super cool how they've been able to take, you know, basketball and then, and then like, you know, Steph plays in, in like these huge tournaments and stuff. He's a, he's a character in PGA 2K23. Right. Like, it's pretty dope. Are you, are you looking forward to uh, EA bringing back uh, the, the NCAA football and, I don't know, being able to play with yourself in a game or something? Yeah, man, I'm excited. Uh, I definitely think. Another thing that's been long overdue, uh, something that uh, really should have been, should never been taken away. It's something I played when I was younger, so I'm excited to be able to play with Ohio State. It's the only team I'm playing with. I don't have to play with any other team. Um, but I'm, I'm not just going to play with myself. I'm going to play with Justin, play with Dwayne, play with JT, play with uh, Troy Smith, some of the old legends. So um, I'm not just going to play with myself. And then I'm excited to play with my receivers and stuff like that. So Yeah, that's dope. What of uh what what shows and movies do you rock with? Like, is there a series that you know you really just been feeling lately? Um, honestly, uh, I mean, I've been on Game of Thrones right now. Uh, I've been trying to honestly uh, get. A, I've been watching a lot of Power, so I'm ready. I'm waiting for Raising Canyon to come back out. I mean, it's out now, but I like to I like to watch it when it's done. So, uh, I'm just uh on Game of Thrones, and I'll probably get back on Raising Canyon after that. And I went on Snowfall to come back out. Oh man, all super good shows. My boy, um, my boy acts on the the spinoff with Tommy in Chicago. So yeah, it's uh, good. Yeah, I know, dude. They got a whole like. What I, I was dying laughing because a friend of mine was saying they they basically got an MCU like how Marvel has that universe. Power has that now between all the different shows and everything. So yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's dope. Um, so. I wanted to go back to like the business stuff a little bit. Um, you know, like, like we were saying, you have, have all these deals, you're, you're working with the companies like athletic brewing and et cetera. Um, do you get invested in what they're doing? Like as a business, ultimately, like, are you, you know, just kind of focused on the obligations you have to deliver or are you getting in there and trying to understand like, their direction as a business and how you could potentially be involved in like their growth, especially something like athletic brewing. That's like pretty new and, and, you know, potentially has a lot of upside that you could get in on early. Yeah. I mean, that's something that I definitely want to be a part of is um, kind of building up a company if uh, it's new or whatever the case may be. So uh, yeah, with athletic brewing, I try to tell people about it. Uh, I love posting on my stories and stuff like that. People always uh, ask me and, and uh, wonder like what it is. So um, it's super, it's a good time, man, to be able to um, not only just uh, partake in the benefits of NIL, but just being a business with it as well and, and learning the game of, of business and, and the different terminology and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm definitely excited to be a part of uh, companies like Athletic Brewing and um, other companies as well and the growth of everything and seeing it from the beginning. Yeah, man, I see people in your comments like, oh, I'm going to pick up a case right now. So, you know, clearly the marketing is working a little bit. Yes, also, sir. I just tried out Lemon Perfect like the other week. That stuff is that stuff's good, man. Yeah, like, it's good. Like sure. truly, I, I went back uh, to 7-Eleven and just copped like I had like an armful. Like it's truly I really enjoy it. Um, yeah, so it's hard was, for sure. Yeah, so that was, and it feels like it cleanses you. It's hydrating. Like I'm not trying to do an ad for them, but like legit, I just before I even knew you were working with them, I just like picked some up the other week. I was like, all right, bet. Like this is super good. Um, but you know, while while we're wrapping up here, you know, last little bit of our convo, uh, bringing it back to football, like. How, if you could share your perspective, I think a lot of people, very few people get to sit in the seat that you're in. Um, how has football like, like changed your life? Like for real on a personal level, of course you are a quarterback for OSU and you're this big star now, everything, but just who do you think you were before OSU and, and what has your success now helped you realize or, you know, taught you just as a person? Um, I mean, I've I learned a lot of stuff being here. 
uh, being just at Ohio State, me and the quarterback here. But honestly, I think I'm the same person in certain ways. I've, I've uh, grown to be a better uh, man. I, I definitely believe that. And a better student and then, of course, a better football player. But um, it's a responsibility and it's something I didn't know about until I got here. And uh, I'm blessed to be a part of it. But at the same time, you got to work hard for it. So it doesn't just come overnight. Um, it's something that you got to just keep uh, working towards and trying to be the best version of yourself, like our coach says. So um, I definitely think that um, I'm trying to do that to the best of my ability, and I'll continue to. Um, you know, one thing I have to say personally, like man to man, when I was growing up, like I say, like I'm so much older than you, but even just like a 10 year difference, man, like, uh, you know, being in high school and like the, the mid and late 2000s and stuff, just keeping it super real, like black quarterbacks were not as much of a thing. Of course, we had our Donovan McNabs and Cordell Stewart's and, and all of that, but it was, it was much more of a rarity. And I just wonder, like, are you conscious of those shifting dynamics? I, you know, I don't want to say, like, you're going out every week, like, I'm a black core, like, I'm black. I know that's not how stuff works, but I do wonder if you think, like, wow, it's, it's kind of cool to be part of this class of QBs who's, like, really changed the game. Yeah, it's cool. Um, I definitely – there was one of the reasons I came here, and being a black quarterback is something – that I uh, hold near and dear to my heart just because uh, it wasn't always like that um, at a at the college aspect and then in the NFL. So, um, but it's 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 been a lot of people before me that have paved the way. So, I um, mean, shout out to them. Uh, Michael Vick is definitely one of the main players that I looked up to growing up, and the reason one of the reasons why I wore number seven. So, um, I definitely uh, am influenced by a lot of those guys. So, I hope I'm a good influence on some of the young black quarterbacks and quarterbacks in general. So, Well, where do you see yourself? Look, well, actually, I was about to say, I was about to say, where do you see yourself in 10 years? I know you say you live in a moment, um, but but do you think of the future like that? Do you ever say, okay, yeah, I do have to go to practice or I do have to think about next week, but do you ever get caught daydreaming like, all right, but if I keep working hard every week, this could be the case. I could, I could have – you know, a finger full of rings or handful of rings or anything like that? Uh, I mean, I look at more so just the, um, the responsibility of um, being a good person in the community. Uh, all the football stuff, that'll take care of itself. If the rings come, that's cool. If they don't, it is what it is. I mean, football is football, but uh, you want I want to be a good man and a good man of God first and foremost, so. Um, I definitely think that's more important. And I definitely think the people in front of me have shown me that, and I'll definitely continue to, to do it. That's a wrap on another episode of My Other Passion. I want to thank CJ for coming out and keeping it super real with us throughout that entire conversation. I'm really wishing that kid the best of luck in all his future endeavors. Clearly, he's a very special talent. We'll be back next Wednesday, as always, with another guest, another conversation. I appreciate you tuning in. Make sure you're checking out the other front office sports podcasts to lead off in the newsroom. That's it for now. I'm out.